Welcome to What's Cooking. I'm Deb. I'm Norma. And today we're making some very delicious dishes. Yes, so our focus is on summer fruits and vegetables. And the goal is to make it easy and tasty. So Deb, you're up first. Yes, so today I will be making a grilled nectarine burrata cheese salad with flavored balsamic and olive oil. It is yummy. Oh, I can hardly wait, it sounds so good. And it's easy, so. There you go. That's our goal. And then following that, I will be making a tomato, leek, and goat cheese crostata. Oh my God, so mm, good. It's so good. And then lastly, I will be making a grilled nectarine dessert with mascarpone cheese and vanilla sugar. And I'll show you how to make the vanilla sugar, and it's really good. So let's get started. Okay. So next, we're going to be doing the yummy burrata salad with nectarines that are going to be grilled. Yes, so you take your nectarine and you cut, there's like a little seam. You can sort of see it here on the camera. So you take your knife and you slice down. Now, sometimes this might be a little, um, it's, not, it's maybe too ripe and it's a little harder, but if you twist, opposite as you see my hands going opposite and you pull it apart and there you go then you cut the seed out very carefully and be careful not to cut your fingers it's always best to cut away and it just pops right out like this then you're going to cut into smaller bite size slices and you can get about four four to five slices out of each one and again remember always be very careful with your fingers so I'm going to put some the orange olive oil and this is from Antica again one of our favorite stores locally and we just pour a little bit on and then Norma, if you would sprinkle just a little bit of our favorite seasoning, which is horror house seasoning. It's not good on everything. Fish, chicken, meat, vegetables. We've not fruits. tried it on ice cream yet, but who yeah. knows? that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> so we are ready to go. And now we're going to take this outside and grill it on the barbecue. Let's go. So here we are at the barbecue and we'd like to have it really hot. So the whole, I, I put our barbecue to about 400. It's at 400 now, so I'm going to open it up. And the next thing that I like to use is a grilling mat. This is ideal for grilling because you just put it on your barbecue and nothing falls through and it's great. My other next favorite thing is duck fat. And this one is, we get it at our barbecue place and there's zero fat content, but it adds a little bit of a flavor besides what you're doing and nothing sticks, even though we have some olive oil on here. So what I'm going to do is to just put these out on our mat, like so. So if they don't have duck fat, can they use any kind of I, I would just that's... leave the olive oil. It should be okay. I just always like the flavor. And as you see, I have it on its side. So what we're going to do is to close the lid and let them grill for a few minutes and then I'm going to flip them over on the other side. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it's been about two minutes or so and now what we're going to do is to turn each one over and you can see that it just gets a nice grill from the barbecue. And if you wanted a little bit more grilled, you certainly can do that. So that's really. what you're trying to achieve. That's what that we're trying to achieve. But these are all nice too, because it looks very pretty in the salad. So we're going to close it up for another couple minutes and then we'll be ready to put the whole thing together. Now we're back in the kitchen and you can see the beautiful grilled nectarines. They're just oh, it's wonderful. They're just yummy. So now what we're going to do is cut the lettuce and you can use any kind of lettuce you want. I happen to like romaine. You can use whatever. So we're just going to slice this down. Now we're going to take a little bit of lettuce for each plate. If you do a plate, then I'll do a plate. Okay. And we're going to put it on there. 
and you don't need a ton of lettuce and even if we have a little leftover that's okay now next we're going to cut the burrata and burrata usually comes in a liquid so we're going to slice small slices and put it on the plate so i'll put a little bit on there and then if you would put a slice of the nectarine, the nectarine. and this is pretty filling skin so, up or skin down uh i think skin down okay it looks prettier okay and then the next batch now what we're going to do is sprinkle a little bit of the orange olive oil on it, even though we already have a lot. And last time, in last segment, Norma talked about how if you'd hold your thumb like this and sort of have it drizzle out just a little. I'll do a little bit on yours. And if you could do the same with, I used ripe peach balsamic. Let me use your rack so I can open this up. No problem. There we go. So again, drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. This is lovely. And look how pretty it is. And then if you hand me a little bit of the seasoning and just a tad more, you don't want it to be salty and a quick, actually what you can do so you don't get too much on there. You just take a little bit on your fingers and sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And there you go. You have this delicious, beautiful, beautiful salad. And I can't wait to try it. Yeah, me too. We gotta dig in. Yes. Manja. Manja. Click. <laughs> and now for the next segment, we're going to make our tomato, leek, and goat cheese crostata. So good. <laughs> I can hardly wait. It's super easy and it's very rustic, which means you can make mistakes and it still looks Wonderful. And tastes good. And we always make mistakes. So yes. <laughs> so stick with thing. us. All right. So we're going to use to our food processor. This is one cup of flour. Adding one quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. And now we're going to turn on yeah. Turn on the food processor. Okay, and shut it off. Okay, perfect. To this, we're going to add butter. And this is one stick of cubed butter, and it's cold. So you gotta keep it really cold in the fridge. Take it out the last minute. If you haven't done that, then stick it back in the freezer and let it get cold. Why does it have to be cold? I don't know. They always <laughs> say it must be cold. I think it has to do with the adhering of uh, to the flour and making the pastry dough. And so you don't want it to melt. So to this you see, I am now moving my fingers around. Be very careful to get it so that it's Just covered in flour. Okay, now we put it on and for... We'll pulse it about 20 times, Okay, more or less, till it looks like peas. All right, and there you can see what it looks like. So it looks like you can see little peas in there. Perfect, that's what you want to achieve. Next, we're going to add water. And to this, we're going to add, if you want to put the top back on, Deb, we're going to add three to four tablespoons of water. It's a lot by side. Um, I have found that typically it's taking now four, whereas before it was three, and it's ice water. So Deb, you want to turn it on, pulse sure. it. I'll do three and a half. Yeah, it does look like these. Yeah, it's more and more connected. Okay, and then let's see how it feels. So you don't want it to get like dough it's all combined. But what you want to do is put your hands in here and see how I'm able to do this, how I'm able to squish it down. And it'll adhere to it. And it adheres. So now it's, it's done. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it here. And we're going to form a disc with all the dough, eat your drunk. <laughs> and then we are going to wrap it into saran wrap. So it's, you don't need to knead it and all of that other stuff, just get it together. And Deb, can you get me some saran wrap? Absolutely. So again, a disc 
and we're going to stick this in the refrigerator for one hour. Can you stick it in longer? Yes, you can. But minimum one hour, because you want it, again, for it to all come together. Let me get this down. Okay, let me And you can make this the night before as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you don't have to wait till the last minute to do all this. But you definitely need it to be chilled. Yes, okay. We'll put this in the fridge, and now we'll move on to the next part of making this. Absolutely. So now we're going to do the leeks, okay? So the next part of this uh, recipe are the leeks. So you can see this is a leek, for those of you who are not familiar. And so what- It's we, like an onion, correct? Yeah, it is. It's in that uh, profile, yeah. definitely. Yeah. They're very dirty though. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this part off because we don't off use- with your head. We don't use the heavy green part. So we go with that. Bloop. And we're going to cut the end off. And now we're going to slice it down the middle. Okay. And they're dirty. See right here, you can see dirt. No, you can it's... see, like if you show on here, if you bend it down, you can see like all this and through yeah. here. Yeah. Nobody wants that in their food. So let's rinse this off. So the next part, we're going to slice it. So how it could be like that, but I've already cut it this way, so it should go okay. So like uh, real small slices. Exactly, so here we go. And do you Got have to quarter... chop these anymore or no? No, so it should be a quarter of an inch. Okay, so the slicing has been done. You can see what it looks like. And now we're going to take it over to the stove and we are going to saute them for eight minutes. Okay, to this we're going to add the leeks onto butter. So this was one leek. For this recipe though, you will use four cups of leeks, which is approximately three leeks. And you will use butter, a half a stick of butter. So you will put it in here, and as I said, you're going to saute it for about eight minutes, and this will break apart. So while it's doing this, to this you're also going to add a pinch of pepper, like that, a pinch of salt, like that by eye, and then you can add either fresh thyme, which you will pull back the leaves like this, see how it's done, like that, or you can use dried thyme as well. So I'm doing this and adding it in here, take that out it around and as I said we are going to let this saute for eight minutes. So the next part are the tomatoes. So uh, I am using the mandolin <laughs> which scares Debbie to no end. And it's not the one you play. <laughs> no, no. So I'm going to show you how to use a mandolin uh, but if you don't have a mandolin a sharp knife cutting it at one fourth inches will work just fine but for purposes of today so you use your little safety device here. You see, never the, use your fingers. No, because we know friends who have had Top part of the tips off. Yeah, really bad. So I push this down so it's in there, and now I'm going to slice it down. It's important that you use ripe tomatoes, but that they're not too ripe. So you want them firm. So you can see there's still some left, but I want to show you what it looks like. It's all even, it's all perfect using the mandolin. So we're going to add that in here. And Debbie, if you can sprinkle some salt on there, um, and I will see if I can get the rest of this to finish through. We'll only go so far and then it stops, so that's it. And don't try to use your finger to get the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, I probably would do it if Debbie weren't next to me. But and she you all is. weren't watching because she would do it, but don't. I'm a professional at using the and mandolin. And this is a really professional mandolin. There's some plastic ones that you can get. And again, just be super, super careful. It's a very good tool, but it's a very dangerous tool. But it's a very good tool. So, so do you now, want some pepper on there? Just a tad, on, just only on the red tomatoes. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, so to this I'm going to add olive oil. So you can see I've already cut tomatoes and I've added some heirloom tomatoes and red tomatoes to this recipe. So with that, next let's check our leeks and see how they're doing. Okay. So these have been sauteing for eight minutes and you can see this is the consistency you want it to look like. So with this, then you're going to transfer it into a container and you're going to let it cool down for as long as it takes, but at least 30 minutes. You can also stick it in your refrigerator to help it accelerate the cooling down, but you definitely do not want to put hot, this hot mixture on top of what will be our uh, dough. So we have taken the pastry dough out of the refrigerator where it's been for one hour. So the next process will be to roll it out. So what, if you can hand me the parchment paper. So what I've done is you want to roll it out to about 11 inches circumference. So what I've done is I've measured out with a pencil using it and a ruler 11 inches. So we're going to use the opposite side, not the side that has the pencil lead on it, but the opposite right. side. To this, we're going to lay it down. We'll add a little bit of flour underneath. That's just so it won't stick. Exactly. And then you also, you can put a little bit on your rolling pin. And okay, so Deb, you want to do the sure. honors of rolling that out? Sure. So you see I put a little flour on there and away we roll. <laughs> this is how we roll. Yes, this is how we roll. <laughs> So, um, and in the beginning, it's a little hard. So you need some. If it's too hard, let it sit for just a few minutes to come to room temperature and that'll help. If it's sticking, you need to add more flour to the rolling pin. Yes. And here we go. And even if it gets a little on there, it'll be okay. See, it's starting to go. So, and if you saw how she started off, she started in the middle and rolling it out. Thank you, Deb. So that's why it helps having it measured out in advance. So we've got it good. So now we're going to take the leeks that have cooled down and we're going to put it in here. And you don't want it to go from edge to edge. So you're putting it in the middle. Like and, making a pie. And you're going to spread it out, leaving a couple of inches on the sides because we're going to fold that up. So let's see, that's plenty. I like to use my hands. I cook with my hands. I can feel the food. Okay. That looks, that looks pretty good. Okay, next, we use four to five ounces of crumbled. And so I'm gonna move this around. It's crumbled goat cheese. Can you use other cheese? Yes, you can. I just love goat cheese. I like the way, I like the flavor. I like the way it melts down, but you could probably use feta. And uh, if you do use feta, hold back on some of the salt on the recipe. You can use Monterey Jack, etc. So there's even orange goat cheese. Ooh, that would be really good. That could be interesting. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to start with the tomatoes and we're going to just, just layer, layer them out. And, and any way you do it is perfect. It really is because this, as we said, is rustic. So it's very, very forgiving. And in fact, you don't want it to look perfect. So uh, you want it to have some little imperfections. How's that? Now it's not perfect, but this is what you want it to look like. So then you bring up the sides and you're gonna crimp it. So we're gonna do this. And if it sticks, lift it up. That is the beauty of parchment paper. Lift up the parchment paper. Okay, bring it up and crimp it to hold it. If it breaks, don't worry, just with your fingers, get it to stick. And now we're going to take and do an egg wash. So one egg with one tablespoon of water, you mix it up like you're doing scrambled eggs. You're going to do this. It makes it beautiful. It gives, gives it, it a, a golden a golden sheen. And it helps kind of adhere things too. 
So we're gonna go around. You don't wanna use too much. You don't need too much. Just go around and put a gloss on it. And we've had our oven set to 350, so we're going to put it into our oven. And how long do you cook it? Well, you're gonna do it for um, 35 minutes, no, 25 to 30 minutes, but 450. Oh, not, 450, Not sorry. 350, so okay. 4, 450. You're gonna heat that thing up. We're gonna heat it up, it's gonna cook fast. So, um, let's put this on a pan and we'll get it in the oven. Absolutely. All right, let's see how it goes. Now for our next segment of what's cooking, we're going to make a grilled nectarine with mascarpone cheese and we're going to sprinkle a little bit of pistachios on top. And it also has some vanilla sugar, which I'm gonna show you how to make right now. It, sounds it so is good. so good. And the vanilla sugar is great because as the holidays are coming up, it's something that you can make as a gift and give it to your friends. So Perfect. Let's go. Here you go. Okay, so in, here is a vanilla bean. I don't know if any of you know what a vanilla bean looks like, but it's kind of hard, sort of soft. It has to have some subtlety to it. So what I do is I cut off a little piece and then what we're going to do, and it's hard to see, but we're gonna cut it down the middle mm. and we're gonna scrape we're going to scrape the seeds out. So if you hold it really flat and you slice it in the middle and then you slice it on the other part and you continue it. And if you can see the vanilla bean, it's really small. Mm -hmm. Then you're sort of pasty. If you can take the sugar and that's two cups of sugar to one vanilla bean and just pour it in. And then when we get the vanilla bean, we put it in there like that. And, and where can you buy vanilla beans at? Any grocery store has them. Okay. So if you see this, we're just scraping, scraping, and it looks like that. Um, probably a lot of you have had vanilla bean ice cream. This is where the vanilla bean comes from, or vanilla. So you just scrape it, and then you put it in there. And then I'll finish out, and I'll do the rest of this, and then we'll put it all in there, and then start the now don't throw this part away because you'll use this in here like I have this is some vanilla sugar and then I add the bean to it and it adds the extra flavor and it's really cute you can get cute jars and that type of thing put a little bow around it get for the holidays so let's get started and I'll put this on there you go. and I just for a couple seconds you pulse it or just run it and that's it. That's fast. It's really fast. And you can see the vanilla in there, the little beans. Some little sprinkles of it. It's almost yeah. like pepper. Yeah, it looks like pepper. And um, you don't want to add a lot more to it because it'll just be too strong of a flavor. So now that we have this, let's get this out of the way. And the next thing we're going to do is to cut our nectarines. For our next, next step, as I told you before, you always look for the seam. This has quite a seam. Almost like oh, a little, yeah. Like a little butt of the <laughs> nectarine. It does. Yeah, so it's very easy to follow. And you just cut around like mm -hmm. this. And then, you, again, you do counterclockwise. And look how easy that opens up. And this is just part of the stem. So we get rid of that. And we cut out the seed. And there you go. So now what we're going to do is you can, if you're baking a whole bunch of these, you might want to do a cookie sheet. I'm just doing two of them. And the next thing that we need to do is add honey to the nectarine. And I'm going to do a little plug. This is citrus blossom. So it has a really unique flavor. It sort of is citrusy and tangy and it's just delicious and it, it's really good with fruit. The company is Crystal Pure Honey and I found it at our local um, farmer's market. Uh, we all have farmer's markets and the plus about eating local honey, it's really good for your health mm -hmm. because the bee pollen of your area, that's where this honey is coming from. So it's, it's really good for you and 
we all have uh, our local farmers markets and we like to support the local businesses. So this is um, crystalpurehoney.com. So you can check it out. And then one of their other honeys that I really, really like is their sage honey. It's just a very smooth, delicious mm. honey and it's, it's wonderful. So how much honey are you going to use for this? So uh, what I do is I take about a teaspoon and we put it right into the middle of the nectarine. So I do it on each one. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna bake it in the oven for about 350 or so. And for how long? About 15 minutes. It should be light golden color. So let's put this in the oven and as soon as that's, while that's cooking, we're going to make the mascarpone cheese sauce that goes on top. So the next thing we're going to do is make our mascarpone cheese. And you can, this is what mascarpone cheese looks like. It's a very sweet cheese. Mm -hmm. And I use about a teaspoon per half of the nectarine. So mascarpone is an Italian cream cheese. Yes. And you can get it flavored or just regular unflavored. So I'm gonna put, two teaspoons, because we just have one nectarine that we're using, or tablespoons, I should say. Oh, looks it's good. so yummy. Looks so rich. Oh. And then the next thing we're going to do is add, it's about a teaspoon of lemon. So you just take a lemon, you squeeze it, and you pour this on here. And again, with the honey, that is the citrus honey, that will really pop the flavor oh, on this. Sure. And then you use, about a, I would say, a teaspoon of the vanilla sugar. Vanilla sugar that's right here, and you sprinkle it in, and then you kind of mush it in. What other uses could you have for vanilla sugar? You could probably use it on cookies, like sugar oh, cookies. Oh, what a great idea. And you could use it in maybe a pudding. Um, mm -hmm. on a on an apple tart. Um, you know, I wonder now that you're saying that, uh, when you make um, the custard, the um, creme brulee, the creme brulee, and you have that for the topping and then you burn it. Oh, that would, that would be, be awesome. really good. Oh my God. We'll have to try that. Yes. We should make that one time. I have one of those burning Yeah, so let's so. do that. Yes, so it'll be delicious. As long as we don't set ourselves or the house on fire. Yeah, we're good. Right, but we'll probably eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so don't probably about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, as you see the consistency, and then you're gonna just put a little scoop of this on top and then you're ready to go. And you can always add just a little bit more of the vanilla sugar if you want to, and then we'll, we'll sprinkle the top. So it's been almost 20 minutes, so let's check and see how the nectarines are doing. Mm -hmm. And here we go. And you can see it's sort of watery a little bit, but it's very delicious. And the nectarines have cooked down just a little bit, so they're just gonna be delicious. So then what, we're, what we do, that looks fantastic. They release their juices. Yes, yes. Really, really nice. With all that yummy honey. Mm. So we're gonna try to scoop up some of that deliciousness of the honey and put this one on there. Then the next thing we do is we add our mascarpone cheese that has the lemon and the vanilla sugar. And it's so yummy. Now, if you also wanted to, you could probably pop this in the oven for another couple minutes if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then what I like to do is sprinkle the chopped up some pistachios. Look how pretty that looks. So by popping it in the oven just to melt it. Just a little lightly. bit. Just okay. a little bit. And then there you go. Okay, so the crostata has been in the oven for about 25, 30 minutes at 450. Let's pull it out and, and see what we have. It smells delicious. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Let me see if I pull that thing. Do you want to take it off like that? Okay, and then we're going to slowly pull it off. 
warm. If it's too hot, you need to let it cool down because if you're gonna pull it off as we did, it might break apart, but you saw it through the beauty of Look how much that, that works. works. So what we have here is basil and we have thyme. So fresh basil and thyme. If you don't have fresh, I'm all for dried herbs. And we eat with our eyes, so we're going to what I call prettyfy it. Okay. So we're just ripping it up with our hands. Can you can you use a knife? Yes, you can, but it imparts better flavor this way if you use your That's fingers. More fun. <laughs> That's more fun. I've also got some fresh thyme here. I've already worked and um, got it prepared here. Got so it pulled, up. pulled it off the stems. So that looks beautiful. I could play with this all day trying to get each little one. Get each but that's one. the beauty of this. It's rustic and you don't have to be perfect. That's right. So there you have the tomato and leek and goat cheese crostata. Wow. <laughs> come back to you. Come back, Cody, come back. <laughs> Let's cut into it and see how it tastes. All right, so let's cut into this and see what we've got. As I said, it's warm. And we can't for wait for you to meet Will. He's our film director extraordinaire and he just Cameraman, makes us director. Everything. Everything. He makes us look good. Yes, he does. And that's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here you see. Okay. What a perfect summer brunch or uh, oh, summer yeah. dinner or an early fall dinner with all the colors. You can see it's warm and still oozing a little bit of the goat cheese. But yes, you can have this as, as we've assembled it mm -hmm. here or as you said, with any kind of green salad. And you can have it anytime. So bon appetit. <laughs> Here we go. Mm. So good. I think it, it's, it is the flavors come together. You taste the brightness of the tomato mm -hmm. and then you have the leeks. Very savory. And, Very and savory, and yes. And then so the goat good. cheese mm -hmm. makes it so smooth. And just another thought or an idea, mm. if you don't like leeks, if you don't like certain things, use something else. If you have asparagus that's in your fridge, let's say you don't like onions, you could use complete mushrooms, mushrooms, anything else. It's a great dish, it's very versatile, and whatever you like, you can put exactly. in it. Exactly. If you're gonna use mushrooms, make sure that you fully cook them and dry them because they release a lot of moisture and you don't want your crust to get soggy. Yeah. As Deb said, it's very versatile. You can make, you can put anything you have in there. So, all right, let's try our salad. I'll save that one for Will. We'll dig into this. So, this is the burrata salad with the grilled nectarines and the orange mm. olive oil with um, the peach balsamic. Mmm. Very good. Very good. It's a very refreshing summer salad, fall salad. I like as long as the fruits yeah. are in season, yeah. use them. Very, very good. On to save the best for last, dessert. <laughs> I think there's a theme with this also. Cheese, all yeah. things cheese. <laughs> mm, this one I've been really curious about. Mm. So good. So, so good. So easy to make. Yes. And it looks pretty. And a lot of these things you can do in advance. As we said, you can have some of the things prepped, pop it in the oven sort of last minute. So. So next, uh, we would like to ask Will to come over and taste it because it's one thing for us to taste it and go, mm, it's really good. And you're on the other end going, yeah, really? Yeah. So <laughs> we want to have Will come over. And well, you have to be honest. Yes. Yes. All right. We're going to move this out of the way. And then also, if you want to get any one of these recipes, uh, check down at the bottom at the, or at the end of the segment and we'll have the recipes for you. Absolutely. 
Everyone, this is Will. <laughs> <laughs>